This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. We are being transitioned from an analog, real, objective world, and into a digital, subjective, hyper-real world, a world that can only be described as metaphysical, of make-believe, a world where black can mean white, and white can mean black, where wrong can mean right where what opinions or actions that are being taken today by educators and lawmakers would have led to criminal charges just 25 years ago. We have entered a new age of new religion, religion that dips heavily into the radically subjective, religion that denies objective standards, religion that demands absolute adherence to new moral codes to new supernatural myths and narratives, new religious dogmas and doctrines, new religious dogmas and doctrines that define the new cult. And this new cult, this new worldwide cult, has infused itself by way of its most faithful disciples at the World Economic Forum, at BlackRock and Vanguard, at non-governmental organizations, At educational institutions, well, it demands absolute, 100% faithful adherence, confessional purity to their new fundamentalist doctrines. Even the major religions of the world are willing to bow to this new woke cult. Protestant evangelicals, Roman Catholics, Muslims, Buddhists, Mormons, Hindus, you name it. They are all willing to bow the knee and confess their privilege to the new God. The God fashioned from the hands of men like Rousseau, Hegel, Gramsci, Marcusa, Schwab, Kamara, Keller, and Stetzer. This new God for a new world that will bring absolute obedience to the new doctrines of the new religion of the new world. For as Baptist minister and early church father of the woke cult, Samuel Zane Batten, said back in 1919, quote, The world war represents the passing of the old order and the end of an epoch. A new day is begun. A page of new achievements is at hand. The old order passes from view. The new world is now rightly upon our vision. The world can never again be as it has been. The house has collapsed, and its structure is discredited. And as the new world is created with its new doctrines, the new faithful and unfaithful heretics had better be aware of the mandated doctrines of the new cult, because the bishops and the cardinals of the new religion are literally everywhere, and in everything. So in no particular order, here are a few of the new fundamental doctrines that you will need to follow, repeat, and proclaim from henceforth in our new world. Praise be to Klaus Schwab, blessings be upon him. Number one, you must with every inch of your soul and your being, if you have a distinct lack of melanin in your skin, you must renounce your whiteness and confess your sin of participating in all things white. And by white, I also mean capitalism. White, to the new subjective priests and bishops of critical social justice, is a political contrivance of white people for the purposes of dominating people of color. The new woke religion states that white is, specifically, the identity group marker for the alleged beneficiaries of whiteness, white supremacy, white racism, and white privilege, as these are described by critical theory, particularly critical race theory and whiteness studies. 
The view from the bishops and cardinals of the new woke religion is this. Racism is theorized as the thing white people do to people of color. After having invented the very concept of race specifically, to be able to do it. And it was done so that they can maintain their power, dominance, and privilege. And privilege, in their radical view, is that whites created unjustly greater access to the resources and rewards of society. To the sinful demons, white is the race they invented and grant exclusive access to when they deem you worthy of receiving in those spoils on certain conditions. Furthermore, it is alleged that they created the white race as the race that doesn't need to be named, as the default race against which all other races are ordered. That is, whiteness exists as the norm, and for the purposes of designating certain other people not white, and therefore not worthy of certain privileges and opportunities. So, in the New World religion, white people are expected to repent of their whiteness by actively taking up anti-racism, which may include the penance of becoming a white ally or acting in solidarity with people of color while taking care not to position themselves as good whites. This dutiful, eternal penance of anti-racism is not the commonly understood idea of being against racism. This particular penance, this woke penance, carries a specific expectation to engage fully in a lifelong commitment to an ongoing practice, including self-reflection, self-critique, and social activism. Blessed Mother of the New World Church, St. Robin D'Angelo, tells us, quote, No one is ever done. End quote. So white people who appear to be non-racist are assumed to be wearing a mask that hides the racism that critical theories of race and whiteness assume must be present beneath the surface. Many early New World Church fathers, including D'Angelo and Ibram X. Kendi, have explained why it is impossible to be non-racist if you are white. Blessed Mother D'Angelo explains in her sacred work, White Fragility, which, by the way, is highly recommended by Mother D'Angelo's apostle, Willie Rice, at Calvary Baptist Church in Clearwater. Well, Mother D'Angelo explains in her sacred text that there is no possibility of constructing a positive white identity. In other words, both early church father and mother, Kendi and D'Angelo, both state that whites are totally depraved. This is a core doctrine of the New World Wicked Woke Church. But so many are unchurched and unevangelized in the New World Woke Church of Subjectivism. They, by no fault of their own, are ignorant of these essential and fundamental doctrines of the New Church, and may be cast forever in the purgatorial fires of low ESG credit scoring. They possess white ignorance. And white ignorance or ignorance is a doctrine that asserts that it isn't mere happenstance that white people have the privilege of remaining racially ignorant. It's part of the package of privileges that comes with being white. Moreover, that package of privileges is deemed so valuable that all whites tacitly agree not to engage with race issues honestly, including their own alleged complicity in systems of racism and power. You see, the secret demonic whites confer this agreement to one another, not explicitly, but through socialization into whiteness, so that to be white in a white society is to learn to actively ignore race, racism, and complicity in racism. White ignorance is viewed in our new woke plan of eternal salvation through the eternal state as a major impediment to getting white people to engage in purgatorial anti-racism work. It is their white privilege that is preventing them from embracing the shame-inducing, guilt-creating, self-hatred of anti-racism. And although the Calvinist religious concept of depravity is nearer to the mark, 
to with in regard to functional meaning of privilege in a faith system of critical consciousness, depravity is in many ways the innate desire to sin. It is having a corrupted nature that desires to sin as a result of the corrupting influence of original sin, and this fundamentally fallen nature is often understood as existing outside of one's conscious awareness. With white privilege, our early woke church fathers and mothers insist that people with white privilege want to maintain, perpetuate, normalize, legitimize their innate white privilege and exhibit a remarkable array of defensive mechanisms to prevent having to confront it head on, to receive the gospel of grievance and the eternal anti-racist work forever and ever. Amen. So we must inform them because they are not conscious of the sin of whiteness that separates them from salvation in the idealized state. We must bring the gospel of vengeance to them. We must bring the grievance gospel into their experience. And that is why it is necessary to have unconscious bias training in their new woke churches and have the faithful apostles of the new vengeance gospel like Matt Chandler and Ed Stetzer and J.D. Greer hold unconscious bias training classes in their churches to help the eternally white to understand that their sin of being born with immutable attributes and their participation in a system of meritocracy has been leading the world into eternal torment, into utter destruction of people actually being happy and satisfied with their lives and with their families. Well, we can't allow any of that in the new world, can we? Which, of course, now leads us into another essential doctrine of the new world church. The doctrine that we must create a genderless, more feminine world. And so our early woke church bishops have helped us to understand that gender is something that is learned and done, not something that necessarily has anything to do with one's biological sex. Sex refers to features of the body for reproduction only and has nothing to do with who someone is. Gender is the part that relates to who you are and who you experience yourself to be. Learning gender happens through socialization, which our new church has explained is roughly a kind of brainwashing society does to itself, through which the dominant ideologies are produced, reproduced, maintained, and legitimated. So our new doctrinally and dogmatically proclaimed role is to delegitimize the concept of gender. Because gender is just a social construct created by the male patriarchy and, of course, by whites. Because those that are in the old world described as women really don't want to be loved by a man who will care for them, protect them, and provide for them. And because those in the old world language known as women really don't want children who will weigh them down their entire lives. No, the former women must be like men, and men must be like women. And we must ensure that young humans previously known as boys and girls in the patriarchal society, well, they need to mutilate themselves when they are young, permanently, erasing the possibility of their ever being able to replicate the species in the future. That species, which has been a cancer to Mother Earth. But, teenage birth rates are down by 70% over the past 15 years. So we know something is working, because the boys are afraid to talk to the girls, because the girls will accuse the boys of rape for telling the girls that they are pretty. And boys don't dare to even look the way of a girl, because they will be accused of harassment by looking at them. And boys are being told that they possess toxic masculinity, and those feelings that they are feeling are sinful and harmful to humanity. And girls are being told that they will always be oppressed if they choose to stay in the societal construct of being a pretty girl who likes things that girls have always liked since the beginning of time. And that if a girl looks like the old world concept of a girl, you know, attractive, pretty, that she is only perpetuating the sin of what is destroying the earth. 
which is male toxic patriarchy. So the early woke church bishops created the doctrine of queer theory. And you must understand this theory if you are to navigate the new radically subjective world. Queer theory seems to deliberately confuse anything that is descriptively normal, in the sense of being commonplace, such as heterosexuality, or what has commonly been known as sexual binary, you know, men and women, which automatically carries an implication that any variation from that sense of falling within the general norm must be understood pejoratively and seen as illegitimate in the New World religion. You see, it views society as carrying strong expectations, if not requirements, for people to fall within the normal range and not to be abnormal in any way, and sees that these expectations as a central application of dominance that will create again that male oppression. So if little Susie identifies as a woman— She is creating the sinful possibility of allowing dominance by the male demiurge that creates oppression in the male patriarchy. If little Bobby identifies as a man, now that is a sin that must be repented of. The last thing that we need in today's new world of subjective order is toxic masculinity. The kind of sinful toxic masculinity that works hard to provide for his wife and his children. That kind of masculinity that endures pain and long hours for the sake of his family. The kind of masculinity that is entranced by the beauty of a woman. That builds societies, art, and architecture that honors the beauty of the woman and the women that they will fight and die for. The kind of masculinity that would put his own life on the line and consider it chivalrous, to die and protect the woman that he loves, the children that he has had with the woman, the kind of masculinity that creates, builds, strives, and builds civilizations, the kind of masculinity that puts others before himself, the kind of masculinity that bows his knee to the old God, to the old God who would lay down his life for sinners like you and I. You see, the new church of the new world must protect itself from the sin of toxic masculinity. It must protect itself from the heretics in the new world religion, the heretics that believe and trust in the old God, the Lord of heaven and earth. Those heretics need to be converted. They need to have non-toxic, feminine pastors who bring the messages. They need to accept the new doctrines of the new algorithmic God, which is being created daily as we speak. But those heretics that worship the old God, you know what? They have something that the new woke religion of the new Sophia wisdom of God can't provide. Peace. Rest. They call it shalom. Rest from the constant pursuit of the new woke religion's performance standard. The performance that never ends for the woke disciples of the woke God. Those heretics that embrace the old Bible, the old Jesus of Nazareth, the old ways. The old ways of looking at men and women, the old crushes and the old inspirations that were innate and given as a gift of God to humanity, to be fruitful and multiply. That is the truth. And now we have a religion of a new twisted ideology and theology creating a new and twisted, weak and woke God. And the old God, he that is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, he that doesn't just hold this earth in his hand, but the universe itself, 
that God is about to have his day. Through his people, men and women, as he made them, perfectly and wonderfully made. And those men, encouraged by those women, will rise. And they will do so with the inspiration to protect whatever is lovely and whatever is true. And the power that will indwell them will be the power of God himself. And what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. Because there is nothing new under the sun. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. Thank you.